talk about being unified and that we're not our little individual cells here, here, and here, either in our cultural standard or our age group or the fact that we're very traditional or that we're very uh, emergent, that as a church that we need to come together and that there seems to be a disconnect to them when people think about unity, they think about everybody thinking the same and doing the same. And the message that we have got to try and get across is that we are all of one body in the body of Christ. That's how we are unified. But we can still maintain our differences. Correct. That's, that is a... Um, with her book coming out and with the churches uh, getting involved with looking at wholeness, looking at the unity that's there, looking at the the uh, identity statement um, and how that pulls us all together um, is is really important, especially in this day and age. You know, the context has changed and the assumption from the old days that, you know, we, we have different denominations or we have different uh, types of churches uh, even within one denomination um, and that, that that can't happen. Mm-hmm. And so they would try to get everybody on the same page in an agreement. Whereas now we need to be able to have the, that unity with diversity. Right. Diversified in, in ethnicity, diversified in um, the... Uh, Theological thinking, diversified in the the version of the Bible that we use, diversified in uh, whether we use uh, drums and guitars and amplifiers or we only have an organ. You know, d- diversified in all these different ways of being church and doing church, um, but still unified as the people of God. So, if I'm understanding this, is that as a church, as a denomination, as a movement, totally, we have to be able to reflect the world. And the world is diverse. And in that diversity, we bring a lot to the table because we are unified through Christ. Right. Well, think about it this way. Um, Where you have come from Mm -hmm. before you came to Bethany wasn't reflecting diversity on many different levels. Right. They had become unified, but they'd also become very singular in... Uh, you know, demographic in uh, theology in uh, their way of doing church you know, how you, you have to have a board and you have to have all of these things in order to be a church. So they kind of narrowed down and so that caused major difficulties in them continuing on. Mm-hmm. Whereas a church that is looking to have that diversity within and maintain that diversity within and is still can maintain the unity in Christ mm-hmm. then that church is more apt to bring in people from the context that we are in the world that we live in people will come mm-hmm. because they see that diversity is okay so I might not look exactly like that person, but diversity is okay because there's other people. They don't all look alike. They don't all talk alike. They don't all dress alike. They, you know, they don't all pray the same way. So I'm okay. I can come to this, this church. But if they look at a church that's very narrow in, in who they are, they aren't necessarily going to feel comfortable. So a postmodern person is going to look at that. Mm-hmm. They look for that unity that has diversity built in. 
when it comes to the congregation, we have a lot, and it's not just this church, but it's many churches that we did not grow up disciple. And therefore, they're not aware of who we are in our past, let alone the past of the church. And as I understand it, we are made of our past and our present in order to become our future. And that in that past and present, we have the choice of what we take with us, but it's who we are. Does our congregation, um, do you think they are knowledgeable of who we are as disciples? I think that the, the older generations are. Mm-hmm. They have either been around the disciples long enough to have heard it and learned about where we came from and know where we are. Uh, many of the younger ones, even though they have been around for 10, 20 years, the disciples, they may not know exactly what the disciples came from or what makes us different than Episcopalians or Methodist or or Baptist. Um, so that then becomes the job of the pastor and the leaders of the church to continue to try and find ways to introduce and educate the younger ones or newer people to the disciples and continue to up, lift up who we are and where we came from and what makes us who we are. Um, I just came back from a conference where there was a lot of younger people who are going to be our future leaders within the church. I came back very energized. But I heard from them, because some of them are not going to disciple seminaries, they're going to other types of seminaries, that they do not, if they knew what our history was, they are happy to be disciples for what disciples offers them. And um, I think that's very exciting for something that we could be doing within this church, along with our mission, because um, I think they go hand in hand. And um, and that's a place where I'm going to need to start learning the different groups within the church. And one of the things that I've observed, and you can let me know whether I'm on target with this, we seem to be a large group of people, but we have all these little pods in it. And sometimes these pods don't necessarily intersect or interact with one another. Right. Sometimes the pods overlap. Sometimes they don't. Uh, and sometimes they communicate well with each other, and sometimes they don't. Um, and yes, that is a part of Bethany. It's, it's pretty much a part of most of the churches, the disciple churches that I've been involved in. Um, there have been pods within. They, and, and that can be a good thing, mm-hmm. but it can be a bad thing if it's let to go to the extreme. And where you don't try and get them at least interacting at some point. And when they all start um, separating and intentionally avoiding each other, right. then you can begin to have problems. But as long as they are within their group, but then they have some periods of overlapping and and they communicate with each other, then it should be all right. I'm really um, interested in these kind of um, observations because, like, I, like we've discussed, that I come from a, a one-dimensional church, so to speak, and I have not had the ability to um, interact on several different levels. Mm-hmm. And um, that... Bethany is more a um, an example of what most churches are within, uh, not even just this denomination, but uh, mainline denominations. Period. Right. We're, we're cross section. Unlike most mainline congregations, we don't have a doctrine, we don't have a creed, uh, we don't tell people how to think. Uh, we just nurture them along in their faith development. Correct. So. 
Um, after reading the things on the journey, 